heard over the radio of Pan Pan. There's a 35 foot trawler that's lost power in Boundary Pass. Right now? Beehive. Yep. Beehive. Okay. Going out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Eat a spicy bugger. Ah! Are you ready for adventure? Subscribe now because we're getting ready for the great Siberian sushi run. Spiden Island and it's privately owned there's actually no one that lives on there permanently however really cool is it used to be a um, big game hunting lodge so there's a hunting lodge on there and everything and they brought in a whole bunch of animals and stuff so there's like fallow deer um, I gotta remember anyways there's lots of really cool animals on there and some in guinea fowl and some mountain sheep you can actually see them and um, yeah, it was short-lived, but the animals are still there. They are not native to here, but they stay on the island. Now it's owned by a shareholder of Oakley. Sunglasses, you know? Yeah. But it's probably owned by a shareholder in Oakley. You can actually see right over there some deer and everything. Yeah, so there's mouflon sheep. Corsica, fallow deer, and Sitka deer from Asia. Kind of cool. And there's some type of guinea fowl. to 
Roche. Still gotta watch those big logs. See that one over there? A little bit of courage. When you're cruising the West Coast, there is current everywhere, it seems. And it really pushes us around. Like, you see us going, woo! Lane is like, woo! Yeah, we're getting pushed around. So welcome to Roche Harbor, San Juan Island. We are going to be here for two nights, including New Year's Eve. But it's the perfect place. It's a nice protected cove. And I think I need some sleep after last night dragging all around a lifting chain at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's the face off. We have Steel Mary next to us and an aluminum boat. <laughs> okay. Right now? Right now? now don't we hold it at 200 it's the weirdest bay because what's happened is that boat's now pointing that way those boats are pointing that way and we always set our anchor pointing into the wind but it looks like from the rivlets or from the ripples that the winds coming from over there so we're just trying to figure out what the heck is happening here. Ho -ho! Okay, I think we're hooked. Okay, don't wave your arms around. It makes us look like we're newbies. <laughs> we're not newbies. I'm just making it dramatic for the camera. Okay, let's get this cover on. Okay, mud. Blaine's doing dishes since we just anchored in Roach Harbor. Good job, Blaine. Oh, thank you. I'm going to try and catch some crab for New Year's Eve to go with our steak dinner and real mashed potatoes. But I needed a new crab pot. Not a crab pot, but a new bait thing. I found this. It was from our tomatoes. We've got the ham in it from last night. Some cat food and prawn pellets. I'm just going to tape it together and put it in one of our traps. And then we'll see what we can catch. Okay, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna put it in this trap and hang it. What do you guys think? That looks pretty good, eh? Okay, this one needs some more food. It's got some gross chicken in there. It needs some ham now and some more dog food or cat food and pellets. Let's go see if we can catch some crabs. Okay, I think this looks good. Just, just waiting to see if it gets to the bottom, make sure I have enough line. I'm pretty sure I do because I think this whole bay is, this whole harbor is 50 feet deep. That's 50 feet of that knot. There we go, we're on the bottom. Okay. Okay, one more trap. Where are we gonna put this sucker? 
Maybe the other side of the bay. Okay, we're all changed. We got umbrellas. Now we can head in. Got the rain jackets on. Thank you, Northbound Gear. Love the jackets. We put our logos on them, and they're actually perfect jackets for this rainy weather in the Pacific Northwest. We're noticing there's a lot of seals in Roach Harbor. Dog is having a heyday with all the seals. And they're very curious when they see a dog. Curious little things, those sea dogs. That's a really cool boat past Patu. She's pretty. Under the power cat. We're kidding. <laughs> Lady Janet. Alaskan Queen from Kodiak. You guys can smell it. He's power washing right now and it just stinks like dead fish. Ugh. So we are right here. There's a curfew. You see that? Lane. All kids under the age of 18. He's the youngest. Actually, that's true. It's interesting that there's a curfew. Where storms are raging at midnight howl and distance rolls of thunder growl. Where the hounds of hell take flight and ghostly clouds race across the night by Richard Jones, 1999. Okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, walking along. Do the ones in Ireland? Uh, no. Okay. Do the ones in Ireland? Okay. Yeah. You know, there's another amazing one is Barker Bell Tradition with their graves? They have a family plot that's paid for by the family, and they open it every time someone Drowning, dies. falling from Roche. Yeah, Here, oh, yeah. see this one? Yeah. Ralph Lincoln Jr., aged eight, died 1929, drowned, falling from the Roche Harbor docks. Oh. It's like a cat sculpture. It's like protecting it. Mm -hmm. Must have been a cat lover, but you can't read anything. There's a reason why they, uh, they close this place at sunset. It's freaky spooky ass. Uh, it's spooky! <sighs> okay guys, this is pretty cool. The Mausoleum. The Macmillan Family Mausoleum was built by John S. Macmillan as a memorial for his family and for the things in which he believed. It incorporates symbols from Masonry, the Bible, and the Sigma Chi fraternity, all of which were important to him. That's kind of cool. So two sets of stairs. Representing the steps within the Masonic order. The stairs are on the east side of the mausoleum stand for the spiritual life of man. The winding in the past symbolizes that the future cannot be seen. And the stairs were built in sets of three, five, and seven. This represents the three stages of life, youth, manhood, age. The five orders of architecture, Tuscan, Doric, Iconic, Corinthian, and Composite. The five senses in the seven liberal arts and sciences. Grammar, rhetoric, logic, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. The columns were created to be the same size as those in King Solomon's temple. The broken column represents the broken column of life, that man dies before his work is completed. The center of the mausoleum boasts a round table of limestone and concrete surrounded by six stone and concrete chairs. 
The chair bases are crypts. The ashes are the family, while the whole represents their reunion after death. The construction of the mausoleum began in 1930 and was completed to its present state by the spring of 1936 at a cost of approximately $30,000. Macmillan had planned to erect a bronze dome with a Maltese cross atop the edifice. He had ordered the dome, but his son Paul cancelled the order as the company did not have the $20,000 it would cost. Our Lady of Good Voyage Chapel. Constructed 1892, Methodist Church. Oh, John Macmillan's denomination. We invite you to light tea votive candle and spend a few moments in quiet prayer for our world and those who are dear to you. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer, Psalm 61.1. It's us way out there. Oh, there's your dude's house. Yeah. Oh, almost done. That's, that's this house here. Yeah, that's the house from. Yeah, that's from the the ma mausoleum. Yeah, yeah, the name is yeah. But the um. Oh my gosh, they lifted it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so Macmillan's house used to be here. This is where there was a wedding last summer. Right? That's what you said? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Macmillan's house used to be here and they moved it to there. So we had a better view. That was a perfect first day in Roche Harbor. We're going to be here two nights. But now it's time to go back to the boat for... You're in wings. <laughs> do what I call the Brian check now named after our Patriot Brian um, but he likes to check it when we have fresh bait to go check to see if we have any crabs because those crabs are smart they'll go in there they'll eat the bait and then they'll leave Good luck crabbing. Feels heavy. Okay, then we got a couple red rocks. Go fast! I'm getting very salty on my jeans. Oh my god! It's very heavy. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we got some good gungies here. 
going to sort them when we get back to them. Okay, so what do we got? So female. Okay. You can tell by the shape, right? Beehive. Yep. Beehive. No good. Okay. I'm going out. Okay. Rocky. Rocky for sure is a keeper. That's a keeper? Do we like Rockies? Male. Yep. There's a big dungy. Yep. So Bees be a male. Yes! Big dungy. My camera's small rocky. Male. We throw don't him need, overboard? We don't, need, we don't need to keep him. Okay, you gotta throw him overboard there. Enough. We went for a ride. Yeah. Definitely big enough rocky. Male. Male. That's a big, big enough rocky too then. Oh, the front. Throw him back in here. Those two, those other are keepers. Three Rockies and one Dungy. The little one's beating up the big one. I know. That's impressive. Okay, we are going to go crack some crap. What? what did you just do? You just undid the whole thing? I can never hunt again. It's a door now. That's actually kind of cool. I just unzipped the one side. I know, but I kind of like it. It's a door now. Okay, come on, Brian. I'll show you how Janice cracks crab. Then we gotta go in here. <laughs> Swim platform. Oh. Okay, here you go. You get all this. Camera. Light. Oop, what did I do? What? Turn that off. I had the side light off. Janice, I'm just gonna get my pajama bottoms wet. <clears throat> Okay, hold on like this. Damn, eh? Wow. All this time I use a knife. What? <laughs> ah! Flip it over. <clears throat> hey, little feisty bugger. Ah! Everybody in the whole bay heard that. Don't lose the legs, that's the best part. Sorry I lost the leg. These ones are harder to clean than the dungies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I had to go wash, woo! Sorry. Almost fell overboard. <laughs> I'm like looking at you going, what are you screaming at? I almost fell overboard. Did you not see that? No, I just seen you put your hand in the air. No, I totally fell over. Like, I went bent backwards. She probably got oh. she probably got light in it when she stood up. Yeah. It almost went backwards. That's... You know how to turn off that GoPro then, Brian? Uh, turn off GoPro. <laughs> no, it didn't <laughs> work. Just hit the button on the top. <laughs> GoPro, turn off. Nope, it's still on. GoPro, turn off.